This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 70-73 Summer Carryover League. We have a series in the America League Midwest today between the White Sox and Royals. Um, the Royals were a team we've talked a lot about as being a, ahead of the curve in their development and uh, put together well as an expansion team and ready to get towards the playoffs even before George Rett would arrive in the early 70s, which is quite a statement and uh, however they are not playing well this year at all and um, there are some areas we can look at as to why they might be disappointing. The White Sox are the team that beefed up um, with the Dick Allens, the Carlos Mays, the Buddy Bradfords and Bill Melton getting some, and they have Wilbur Wood of course but they're just kind of lingering in the middle of it all as well. I'm not really kind of sure where these two teams are going. And we're in a game six today. And in five games, I just don't know where we're going with these two squads. As it seems like each team has had opportunities to take control of the series and have let opportunities slip away. Let's go back to game one in Kansas City. Tom Bradley versus Bill Butler slight advantage for Bradley but it is the Royals who in game one look like this phenom team we envisioned early on come out of the gates with five runs in the first inning double by Pinella, Kirkpatrick's got a homer, Amos Otis, John Mayberry and this is a great young nucleus here a couple more in the fourth you know they really beat up on Tom Bradley the number two starter here um, Butler's not perfect. He gives up a three-run homer to Tony Muser, of all people. His name will come up again in this uh, narrative. 10-5 final for Kansas City, and you're thinking, okay, the Royals really are going to take control and kind of beat up on the White Sox. Maybe that's what the story of the series will be. Game two, the Chicago White Sox are, are thinking, no, that's not what's going to happen. Because they have Wilbur Wood out there, and anytime you have Wilbur Wood pitching, you're the best team in baseball because Wilbur Wood's pitching. And he makes your whole team look great. And he's going against the ace of the Royals, Mike Heedland. And Mike, of course, is doing his best to keep it close. Gives up a two-run homer to Buddy Bradford, who crushes right-handed pitching. Um, late in the game, the Royal bullpen falters a bit, and they give up uh, another home run to Tom Egan in the ninth inning. And meanwhile, Wilbur Wood is going for the shutout. He makes it interesting in the ninth, and believe it or not, the White Sox take him out and go uh, to Bob Humphreys to get the final out. And Wood is a little disappointed not to get the complete game, but he gets a 4-1 victory. And the White Sox get the split, and they get home field. They return to Chicago in Game 3. And now it's the White Sox turn to look like they're going to put the Royals away. They win a very tight game, 3-2 to two in extra innings. Uh, Bonson and Bob Veal are the starters. They, they're fine. Uh, but it is a tie game through seven. We're tied at 2-2. Two to two. Single runs uh, make up all those. And the bullpens do pretty good today. But in the bottom of the 11th inning... Rich Hinton is left in there to pitch a lefty reliever to face Tony Muser, who doesn't hit lefties very well, except he hits a solo home run. Off of the lefty reliever, Rich Hinton, a rare, I'm going to say probably never happened, but you never know, uh, Tony Muser gets a walk-off homer for the White Sox in 11 innings. And now you think the magic belongs to the Chai Sox. It's the White Sox year, right? So what do they do in game four? 
trying to put the uh, dagger into Kansas City season. Well, they lose 4-2. to two. Prince Rogers Nelson, the number three starter, who has uh, his best year, um, throws a complete game. The Royals, um, they, they were given up left for dead, but then they rally in the late innings here. White Sox, bullpen implodes. You know, they, it was a 2-0 game, Buddy Bradford 2-0 homer. And it seemed like a 2-0 lead was like a 10-0 lead, but it really isn't, of course. And the Royals plug away with a run in the eighth, and in the ninth inning, boom! You have a homer by Pinella, and then a two-run homer by Dwayne Josephson, former catcher of the White Sox. And just like that, this series is all tied up again, and the Royals have reclaimed home field. So now what happens? Where do we go from here, folks? I'm not sure. Game five in Chicago. And the White Sox win a conventional game, I guess you could say. Uh, Lou Krause beats the ace, Mike Heaton, which is unconventional. Kansas City would have had the pitching advantage. They had a Pat Kelly homer to take a lead. But then the White Sox started to get runs in the middle innings, while again, the Royals, coming off of that big comeback win in game four, Go stone cold in game five. Can't figure out these teams. The Royals, um, it hasn't been the particular source of losing in this series, but when you look at the roster construction, their three left-handed pitchers are Bob Veal, Bill Butler, Rich Hinton. And they're probably the, one of the weaker groups of three lefties. Normally, the teams with the best left-handed pitchers usually make a name for themselves in Stratomatic. The world champs a couple years ago was uh, the Orioles with Mike Cuellar and McNally in the rotation. And then last year was John Matlack and Jerry Kuzman in the Mets rotation. And the Royals just neglected the left side of the mound this year. Amos Otis has been very ordinary, nothing more than that. John Mayberry, you know, the big bats of the Royals just are just puddling along here. But, folks, you know, the Royals do have home field and here at home in a Game 6 and a Game 7 if necessary. But, unfortunately, they have to deal with Wilbur Wood again. Wilbur Wood will be pitching Game 6. That's not looking good for Kansas City. Against Bill Butler, again, a matchup of lefties. And so there you see, this is the, if the Royals lose today, now we know why. Uh, they just simply can't match up with their lefties. So leading off for the White Sox is Louis Aparicio, 34, rounds short. Walt Williams, base hit, the C Steeler. Carlos May, 69, off the Butler card, here we go. Double one of 14, is single dot dot. Runners on the corners for Dick Allen, and this is not what you want. Let's show it to you now, because it's going to be showed at some point in the game. Why not now? There it is, the 1972 Most Valuable Player of the American League, Dick Allen. Uh, a monstrous year. White Sox ponied up a lot to get him here sooner. Uh, so they can use this card uh, for four, four cracks with this card. So it's going to be pretty cool. Three cracks with this card. It's going to be pretty awesome. The pitch to Dick Allen. 46 is a walk. The bases are loaded. For Bill Melton, let's take a look at him. Again, yeah, the White Sox, if they get this thing cranked up, this slugger-rich part of the lineup, there's no, no team better than this offense. Carlos May, Dick Allen, Bill Melton, and Buddy Bradford, who is the day off. All guys with tons of home runs. Bill Melton, 45 off of Butler, is a bouncer to second. This is Cookie Rojas, a 2-8. And he makes the play. And there you go again, folks. Momentum swings in one inning. The White Sox looking to dump on the Royals, and there you go. Now the Royals have the momentum. It's just hard to predict this series. Um, I mean, it's ultra competitive, but it's still head scratching at the same time. Fred Patek, 48, bounce to second. This is Jim LaFay, a 3 18 at second base, and that's going to be a base hit. Patek is going to steal. He's a double-A stealer, and he hasn't had many opportunities this year. And he rolls a 20, and that is not going to be good. No. 
There you go again. Cookie Rojas, 37. Okay. And with two outs, Paul Shaw, 48, second X. And again, the 318 at second base makes the play. Don't know what's going to happen, folks. Really don't know. Other than the one constant I do know is Wilverwood is going to pitch well. Can't imagine him pitching poorly today. Whether he wins or not, that's another that's another discussion. We've seen Wilverwood <laughs> pitch 18 and 14 inning games because this team has not supported him. So winning is pitching well is a constant. Winning is not for Wilbur Wood. Jim LaFay, 54, bouncer to third. Shaw is a 2 e 28 at third base, and he makes the play. Tony Muser, 59, pops to first. Mike Ryan, 59, rolls to second base. Bottom of two, Amos Otis, 45, off of wood. Is it going to be triple one base hit? Um, B Stealer, but let's, you know, let's not run out of anything here. Lou Pinella, 69, pops to second. John Mayberry, 1-7. Let's take a look at the John Mayberry card. Your eyes are like, wow, this is great. Homer, one. Fly ball the rest. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's a fly ball the rest. Mayberry, though, magnificent year in 72. 25 home runs when he arrives in uh, from Houston. Meanwhile, back in Houston, they have to be scratching their heads. Why didn't they, he do it for them? Ron Swoboda, 57, is a K. Scoreless in the third. Russ Snyder, 210, pitcher. Louis Aparicio, 27, single to the Sea Stealer. They have Joseph's got a plus two arm catching. That's nice to know. Walt Williams, 211, pops to second. Aparicio's going to attempt to steal with two outs. This is going to be close. He's not being held on base. Plus two arm, 11, 13. He's safe. Because he's not, wasn't held on. I don't hold C's to try and encourage more stolen bases in my league. B's, A's, double A's all get held. So. Runner at second, two outs for Carlos May. 6'11 off Butler, bouncer to second. And again, here's uh, Mr. Rojas who makes the play. Cookie Rojas has bailed Bill Butler out twice today. Bottom of the third, the Reverend Pat Kelly. 1'7 is going to be a double. Dwayne Josephson. 1'8 is going to be a single to right field for the Speedy Kelly, a 17 runner. Well, William's got a plus one arm, he's going to run and score. And the Royals have a run. Fred Patek, 59, skies are right. And Cookie Rojas, 56, skies are left. One zip in the fourth. Dick Allen, 44 off Butler, catcher's card. This is uh, Joseph is a 3 5 catcher, and he makes the play. Dick Allen, 43. Excuse me, not Dick Allen, Bill, Bill Melton, 43, second X. This is going to be Rojas again, the 2 8 makes the play. And Jim LaFay, 37, is a sky the center, Bill Butler. Nice uh, finish after the slow start in the first inning, loading the bases. He's done very well. Paul Shaw, bottom of fourth, 57, is a K. Amos Otis, 1 9, base hit. Lou Pinella, 58, sky the center. And Otis is going to attempt a stolen base here. He's going to make it on a two. And the T rating, four. You're going to hit that as well, I believe. Let me just double check here. Mike Ryan's a T, one of four. Right on the button there. So he does get the stolen base and ends up at third. And it'll be John Mayberry. He rolled a one seven last time. Two three, rolls to third base. We go to the fifth. It's Tony Muser. 4-4, four, four, catcher's card. Again, Josephson's a 3. Makes the play. Uh, Mike Ryan, 1-3, flies to right. And Russ Snyder, 2-6, grounds to first. Bottom of the fifth. First, let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, Ron Swoboda leads it off. 66 is a pop to second. Pat Kelly, 612, flies to right. And 
Dwayne Joseph, 727, Browns the third. One nothing game into the sixth. Butler's breaking inning is the sixth. Apparicio. 49, single one of seven. Does not get it. Rolls an 18. Walt Williams, 68. Look at this. Triple one fly ball off the Butler card. Oh, disaster here. He rolled the one off of Bill Butler. That's terrible. You know, really, Bill Butler's card is set up for success with a 4 9. Let's show the card again. Um, because it's pretty. I mean, statistically, it's an okay performance. 4 and 12, but a 377 ERA. 4 and 12 reflects an expansion team's winning percentage. The 377 ERA, and it's a pretty good card. A lot, you know, a lot of walks, but single one is seven, double one is uh, two, and triple one against righties is excellent, unless you give up the triple, which you just did. So now they got to bring the infield up for the dangerous Carlos May and Dick Allen. One eight is a base hit because you brought the infield up, and we got a one one tie. Carlos May is an ace dealer. Joseph's got a plus arm. He will run, and he rolls a 20. It just seems like these teams, they do something good, they do something bad. So Carlos May gets thrown out by the plus arm catcher. Two outs, and it's Dick Allen. 67 is a K. 1-1 one, one game. Again, with Wilbur Road to the mound, this could go 15 or 16 innings, <laughs> as we've seen a few times on YouTube. Here's Patek, 510 is a K. Rojas, 69, pops to third. And Paul Shaw, 33, grounds to short. 1-1 one, one game, going to the seventh. Butler, I think you gotta break him to get him out of there. Two base runners will do it. An unfortunate triple to tie this thing in the sixth for him. Here's Bill Melton. 1-9, here we go again, homer one, fly out, and it's a fly out. So, just to keep track of all the on ones, Mayberry on one, fly out, triple one, on out, got it, and homer one, on out, missed it, of course. So, they're one for three. They can go one for 19 and be uh, on, uh, on par, I guess. Jim LaFay. 1-2, it's a low max, and with two outs, it's talking Tony Muser. 47's a walk. Final batter for Butler will be Mike Ryan. 46 is a walk, and that'll do it. So he leaves after six and two-thirds, as he just broke here. Which means he cannot qualify for a win. You've got Russ Snyder in there. Interesting situation. You bring in a righty. And the Royal and the White Sox will probably bring in a right-handed batter. Wally Bunker will come in. Let's take a look at Wally. He'll come on, on in the seventh. Uh, slightly vulnerable against lefties with two men on, but they have Buddy Bradford on the bench. So let's take a look at Buddy Bradford. Yeah, Buddy Bradford's going to pinch hit. you got to get this guy in the, line, in the game against a righty. Take a look at Buddy. In a bizarre series, here's a bizarre split of Buddy Bradford, a 238 hitter in 1973. But as you can see, the splits support this notion that he crushes righties and he's terrible against lefties and becomes in comes in in a reverse platoon situation here. With runners at first and second and two outs, the pitch to Buddy Bradford. 65 off of Bunker. <laughs> Homer won a 16 double, and it is gone on a 16. Wally Bunker comes in and serves up the lollipop. Would have been a homer against the lefty as well, if you're wondering about uh, Russ Snyder. Yeah, Russ Snyder has power. He would have hit a home run as well. So anyway, it's a three-run homer. And just like that, now the momentum's back to the White Sox with Wilbur Wood. This seems like they're going to win, right, folks? Isn't, aren't the White Sox going to win this series in six? Well, we'll see. So it'll be Aparicio now. One six is a ground out, and the inning is over. Not good news in Kansas City here, as their one nothing lead dried up in the last two frames. 
Stretch time. We've been enjoying uh, Young Brigham by Ramblin' Jack Elliott, 1968. The Rock Island Lines, A Mighty Fine Road. Maybe I'll crank this up a little bit and the Royals have a chance here. Bottom of the seventh, Wilbur Wood. Amos Otis leads it off. Looking for his third hit. One, five. Let's take a look at Amos Otis, folks. Crushes lefties, one, five. His magnificent 1973. 26 summers, a 300 batting average. Stolen bases are down, but we really don't need him to steal bases in this version. It is gone, and it is four to two. <laughs> So now it's time for Wilbur Wood to get lit up here because everything is just, has just about happened to these two squads in this series. Lou Pinella, 211, pops the second. John Mayberry, 47, is a K. And with two outs, one Ron Swoboda, 26 is a K. Maybe not. It's 4 2 in the eighth. Bunk continues. Walt Williams, 1 8 single. See Steeler with Josephson catching. They're going to try to steal again. And he's in there again on a 12. Carlos May, 57 is a K. Dick Allen, 58, pops to second. Bill Melton, 27. Off the Melton card, double 1 to 11 is a base hit on RBI. He is back to a three run lead, 5 2. And with two outs. Batting for Jim LaFay will be Bobby Noop, the new defensive second baseman. Bobby Noop, 66, triple one fly ball off bunker, and he misses it. That's four on one out the rest uh, come up today. So, 5-2 game in the bottom of the eighth inning, and the White Sox got their defense in there. And they got that insurance run, and they got Wilbur Wood. What could possibly go wrong for the White Sox? Leading off for the Royals, Pat Kelly. 4-4, four, four, homer 1-2, to two, fly ball. Uh, he missed it. I'm expecting to get another one of these today, folks. we still got plenty of time. <laughs> Dwayne Josephson, 39, flies a left. And with two outs, it's Freddy Fontek. 2-8 is a K. Maybe not. It is a 5-2 game in the ninth. Bunker leaves with an inning in the third. The big homer, though, just ruined the Royals' chances at this point. Horatio Pena will come on and pitch the ninth inning. It'll be Tony Muser leading off. 1-6 is a K. Mike Ryan, 65, double one of four, base hit. Buddy Bradford with a big blast is up again, 56, second X, but this is Potat looking for another double play grounder as a 2e8, and he gets it. 5-2, bottom of the ninth for the Royals. This could very well be their season, folks, if they lose this and fall further under 500. It'll be Wilbur Wood going for another complete game. He can pitch 10 innings as a starter nine if something bizarre would it, were to happen in the ninth inning. Top of the lineup, all righties. Cookie Rojas leads off. 47 off of Wood is single, one to six. He doesn't get it. Goes another one of these 12s. I've seen that a lot. Paul Shaw. 1-3, grounds to short, and with two outs, it is Amos Otis having a perfect day to this point. And an imperfect season for Kansas City. The pitch to Amos. 1-7. <laughs> Why not, folks? Let's look at the card one more time. Because it's something on a 1, fly ball the rest. Homer 1, fly ball the rest. And uh, we miss it, of course, with a 17. Hit it once today. Right there, in a bad spot for Bill Butler, which ultimately caused him to break and come out. And then we had five other of those rolled. It all adds up to a complete game victory for Wilbur Wood and the White Sox. And we really have to commend the White Sox for persevering in this series. They win games two, three, five, and six. And oddly enough, number two starter Tom Bradley lost the other two games. He's actually a pretty good pitcher there. And the Royals. This season is 
going bad in a hurry. And the probably m the most disappointing team this year in Strat could be Kansas City. Ratio Pena gives up a hit and a K in the ninth. Wally Bunker inning in a third. It didn't happen today. Three hits and two runs and a K. Bill Butler, I believe, has to take that loss. It certainly does, as the uh, the lead changing runs were his walks. So, five hits and three runs, three walks, and one strikeout. Meanwhile, Wilbur Wood gets that complete game in the second win of the series. Six hits and two runs. No walks, seven strikeouts, and a complete game. And the Ramblin' Jack could not get his Royals to uh, come back in the series. 1-0-0-9-0-1-0-9-5-9-2-6. That is game six. And the White Sox are the new flavor of the month in the American League Midwest. Projected to possibly break through, and they're doing it with a modest record at the expense of the Kansas City Royals. Take a look at the both teams' year-to-date numbers and see where the problems lay. For the Royals, we'll start with them. They are now 8-13, and 13, folks. They are going to have a tough battle trying to get back into playoff contention. Not looking good this year. Hitting just 240 with a 368 ERA. Well, there's your problem. There's your problem. This this offense is supposed to be hitting much better than that. I mean, going through their lineup, they don't even have any 240 hitters on the team. You know, they got uh, uh, Paul Shaw, 274, Otis, 300, Pinella, 312, Mayberry, 298. Pat Kelly, 291, Josephson, 316, Kirkpatrick, 275, Bob Oliver, 260, Pontiac, 267, Rojas, 300. So a whole team of, the entire baseball team is hitting over 20 points worse than what they would do. Uh, a team mired slump. Um, pitching has done the, they're, they're hanging in there pitching, really. 368 is nothing to sneeze at. Um, looking for an all-star for this group. You know, it's just a slumping team. Uh, 24 hits for Lou Pinella. Let's see. He's hitting 312, so at least Lou Pinella is not in a slump. And for the White Sox, with all of that, they're only 10 and 9. And with all of the greatness of Wilbur Wood, he's only 4 and 2. So, yeah, it's positive because they're not losing. They have a winning record. They're hitting 253 with a 270 team ERA. And again, you know, they need more punch than this if they're going to get to the playoffs. They, you know, Carlos May and, and uh, Dick Allen. Dick Allen's 21 for 68, but he only has two homers and eight RBI. Carlos May, at this point, it's even worse. He's 18 for 74. And yes, Carlos May has zero home runs so that's it and we when we take a just a quick look at the American League Midwest you know the twins are not really running away and hiding they're only nine and seven so the White Sox and the twins and uh, the Royals really have found themselves tumbling to the Brewer level which is not something we projected early on I don't think you're going to see a wild card team come out of this, and the Twins will probably figure out a way of winning this division and limping in as a number four or five seed in the playoffs. That's it today from Kansas City. Congratulations to the White Sox. Uh, an era where they didn't go to the playoffs, they have a reasonable chance to do so this year. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.